Hello and welcome to Wellness by Design today. I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer and your host. And today my guest is Dr. Paul uh, Baratiero and he is an expert in hydrogen water. And I'm really excited about this because a lot of people I don't think really understand that hydrogen water, when we, when we drink hydrogen infused water, we can actually a lower pain and inflammation in the body that's been scientifically studied. I've read some of the studies and been really impressed with it, which is why I wanted to bring to bring Dr. Paul on the show to talk about this. So welcome, Dr. Paul. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Well, you know, as I said, I, I, I kind of knew about hydrogen water a number of years ago when my health started to decline and I started reading everything. I did hear about hydrogen water first from the biohacking community. Um, I had gone to the, the bi Dave Asprey's biohacking um, conference in 2019 and had, uh, I don't know if it was you, someone else had, or, or someone else that had like a, on the tech floor had a hydrogen uh, set up. And so, you know, tried it out and there was so many things. So, but it, it really uh, was surprising to me. It's something that I hadn't heard of before. And so um, just delighted to share this with the audience. And now I met you at Mindshare uh, last year and heard about hydrogen water again. And I thought, okay, this, this keeps coming up. We need, to, we need to learn a bit more about it, share it with the audience. So how did you, like you weren't born knowing about hydrogen water. So how did this, how did this come into your, um, your sphere uh, and into your world? Well, thank you. Years ago, many years ago, about almost 20 years ago now, uh, my wife, we I've been married 29 years to an incredible woman, the love of my life, uh, my queen Jacqueline. And the first 10 years of our marriage, she was sick and had thyroid issues, anemia, gynecologic, you know, all kinds of issues going on. And at that time, I would lose her for a week, a month. She would be stuck in bed, couldn't get out of bed on her cycle. And so <clears throat> I was looking for a way to help her. I was not um, understand. You're right. I didn't know anything about hydrogen, had no clue that hydrogen had a benefit in the human body. And I was simply looking and I had some friends of mine who I went to church with that had an organic food store and they had brought this water machine in their in their company that was making alkaline water right and that was like i said 20 years ago and i was like well what would that do for the body i don't understand you know the ph isn't going to do anything for the body that that really isn't a medical approach and they're like oh i i don't know but all these people are having all these benefits and you know we have like hundreds of people a day coming and filling up gallon jugs and stuff and i was like whoa well long story short we didn't do anything about it. Um, my friends had an issue after 9-11. Their, their store had reduced in revenue and they were looking for a little bit of help to get them through the tough time. And so I gave them help. And long story short, I, I forgave the interest. And as a thank you, they took my wife and I on a cruise with them. And the first day of the cruise was my wife's first day of her cycle, her menstrual cycle. And she was in bed she couldn't get out and so i thought okay here we have this nine day cruise she's not going to be able to participate for the last two days and so they they had purchased or brought water with them for us and it was nine gallons like gallons of water they brought us on the cruise so that we could have water during our time on there and i drank the water the first day and I didn't sprout wings or levitate off the ground or any amazing thing. But my wife, when she drank the water, she felt something. She told me that her body was craving it. And so I was like, okay, you drink that water. I'll drink the ship water. And within two days, she was up and around and participating. And I was like, holy cow, what the heck? And so I had to then look into it to see what was going on. Now, as I, as I initially said, I was correct. It was nothing to do with the pH of the water. It was nothing at all to do with that. But what I found is that it had uh, ORP, oxidation reduction potential in the water. It was later that I was studying the ORP value in water when you make the 
the water negatively charged and how beneficial it is for the body. And it was beneficial for her. And then later, as I was studying over a year and a half period, I learned that when these alkaline water machines are brand, brand new, they can make hydrogen gas. After a couple of weeks, they don't anymore, but it's that hydrogen gas that was benefiting people. And so it was back in 2008, 2009, that I really understood that hydrogen was responsible for the benefits that I was experiencing with my wife. And so once she was much, much better, I wanted to introduce that to the world. Hmm. It's so interesting. So it it's not um, it's not the alkalinity. It's the fact that the hydrogen is in the water. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And what was your background? Like you mentioned, like are, did you have a medical background at all, or you? I yes. Yeah, so at that time, I was what's called a podorthist, and that was an ankle down. Uh, my scope of practice was diabetes and how it affects the foot and and we were we were trying to prevent decubitus ulcers and amputations at that time in my career mm, so you you know so funny how it's not funny really but pretty much everyone that's in this space they've had their own personal uh you know personal either themselves or someone they love uh who couldn't get well and were seeking out alternative solutions but it sounds like this kind of um uh fell fell on you really yeah yeah. Um, yeah like divinely maybe um fell on you and really just changed everything so your wife is how is she now you're doing wonderful she's vibrant amazing lady who lives life and does great and she tells people I, i'm a that she's alive today because of the water and so that that's good um you know because i like her a lot and so <laughs> you know uh, wonderful. Uh, okay. So what is it like, do we need to have a chemistry lesson here to understand uh, <laughs> hydrogen? Yes. Yes. So if we really look at the human body, hydrogen carbon chains make up our anatomy. If we really look, you know, at the deep level of our body, it is carbon hydrogen chains. Hydrogen is critical. I'm going to get some hydrogen water now. <laughs> I just got I just got regular water. I'm gonna have to get myself a hydrogen water. <laughs> there you go. Um, so a a big part of the body is hydrogen, but people don't really understand how critical it is for health. So when we look at stomach acid, HCl, it's hydrogen hydrochloric acid. So hydrogen, and without hydrogen in the body, you can't produce HCl. Um, when we look at our gut. We are designed, and most people don't know this. This is where I have a major challenge ahead to educate the world because most people have no idea about hydrogen and the effects on health and wellness and the body and immune function and joint issues and inflammation and all these things. Well, our body is designed to produce hydrogen gas in our intestinal tract when we ferment food. So that is dependent upon us having the correct bacteria in the gut. A lot of people talk about gut dysfunction or gut damage or leaky gut. And I, I don't even know what leaky gut means really, you know, something coming down your leg or I, I don't know. So, you know, what I understand is that if your gut is dysfunctioning, it's because the bacteria is incorrect in the gut. We should have 91 to 96% anaerobic microflora and only one to 4% aerobic. The problem is to have anaerobic microflora thriving in our gut, we have to have a negative electrical potential of, let's say around a negative, anywhere from, from a negative 100, 200, but what's optimal is th negative 300 to negative 400 millivolts of electrical potential in the gut tissue itself. And, and when we have that electrical potential, then we, the, the biome, the terrain is established and we have the ability for the anaerobic microflora to create communities and homes and to live and thrive. We can take all the probiotics we want, but if we don't have the right electrical potential, it's a band-aid. It, it doesn't ever create communities. And so this is one of the things that, that is needed for us to produce hydrogen on our own. So because 
I believe 97% of the population have a dysfunctioning gut to whatever level. Mm -hmm. They can't produce hydrogen the way they're supposed to. And if you can't produce hydrogen, the primary role of hydrogen is to reduce oxidation, to reduce inflammation, to also have neuroprotective effects through ghrelin secretions. There's a hormone in the body called ghrelin, G-H-R-E-L-I-N, and it's responsible for many, many things in the body. It would take a year of study just to understand all the pathways, all the aspects of the body that ghrelin, what's what called modulate or signal modulation in the body. And so it's important to understand that when hydrogen's in the body, hydrogen can signal, selectively signal gastric ghrelin. So hydrogen is critical for immune function. It's critical for gut function. It's critical to digest food properly. It's critical to be able to eat fiber and fatty acids because that's normally when we have anaerobic microflora within the anaerobic microflora family, we have these wonderful things called hydrogen trophs. And hydrogen trophs will take fat, fatty acids and fiber and convert them into hydrogen gas. And so <clears throat> it's that's how it happens, how it's supposed to happen. But if our gut's not right, we won't have hydrogen trophs. And many times people eat salad or, or you know vegetables or things and have diarrhea. Well, you know that your gut is not functioning properly because you, sh you can't process fiber at that point. Just like people that are gluten and dairy intolerant, they have gut issues. They can't process gluten and dairy. And so when you have our gut working correctly, which hydrogen can fix that in two weeks, you can eat any kind of food you want if you choose to. And, and our body is supposed to be able to process all types of food. So that's what I want people to understand fundamentally is that your body is designed and supposed to, that's a big supposed to, but supposed to produce hydrogen. I was, I was joking the other day and said it was fart therapy and everybody laughed and thought it was hilarious, but that's the reality is when we have flatulence, you have hydrogen, you have methane, you're supposed to have hydrogen. And the problem is many times we're not producing hydrogen the way we're supposed to. Mm. So, okay, this is really interesting. You're the first person I've heard talk about the electrical potential mm -hmm. um, as being critical, which is, I find that like super interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe everyone that's listening doesn't, but I just like kind of geek out on the, on the science stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So naturally, if we, if we had a healthy gut, we would be produce. Do we produce the hydrogen, or is it the bacteria that produces the hydrogen? Yeah, bacteria. That's part of us, but it, it is the bacteria yeah. that are converting yeah. short, short chain fatty acids, medium chain fatty acids, and fiber. Mm -hmm. And hydrogen has this effect on the body then of uh, lowering inflammation, like boosting the immune system, lowering inflammation, which is probably going to happen. Um, then and it and it helps hel helps the gut be healthy. <laughs> I mean, uh -oh. it's kind of like it's kind of like it starts with the gut health, right? And then has this uh, the downstream effects. Is that how is that how it works, or is it the hydrogen getting through directly? You you blanked out for a second because oh. uh, say that again. <laughs> okay, so oh yeah, see my internet connection is unstable. Okay, um, so the is it the fact that. Um, the hydrogen makes the gut healthy or that then has the downstream effect or is it the fact that um the hydrogen itself kind of gets out into the into our into our body from the gut into the body that has a downstream effect or is it both that's 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 a good like chicken or the egg right um so hydrogen has is very electron rich Hydrogen is critical. There's over 200 biomolecules in the human body that are regulated by hydrogen gas being present. So we have to have hydrogen gas for many systems in the body to work properly. We also can't have hydrogen without the gut being working correctly. So it's a symbiotic relationship that we need those bacteria to produce hydrogen. Yeah. And when we have hydrogen, then our whole body functions the way it's supposed to. So it all starts with those amazing bacteria 
in our gut, which are which is trillions of bacteria in our gut. But what's critical is it needs to be the correct bacteria. And I talked about electrical potential. When we have antibiotic overuse or when we have um, chemicals from pesticides or other things that get into our gut, it can change the polarity of the gut from a negative to a positive. And then we, st we stimulate aerobic bacteria and aerobic bacteria wants carbs and sugar and not fiber and fatty acids. So this is really where we have the issue is some people have food cravings that's not based on their desire. It's based on the bacteria in the gut. But once we turn the gut around, once we get the proper environment so that the anaerobic, you know, can, can thrive and live, then all of a sudden within days, your entire life changes because you can desire and eat proper foods and have energy and ATP production instead of people craving carbs and sugar because they can't produce enough energy otherwise. So it, it gets into a big chemistry lesson, really, it, it really does. However, what's important to understand is it all starts with the gut functioning properly. And it's really difficult. Anyone that understands gut health, it's really difficult to fix a gut and to have it stay fixed for any amount of time because we're consuming pesticides, we're consuming heavy metals, we're consuming all these kinds of things, we're breathing in air that has toxins in it. And so the gut is affected negatively every single hour, every single day. And so water with hydrogen gas in it is the answer because that will fix the gut and you'll be drinking it every day. And so as you're bringing in contaminants and things in the body that harm the gut, you'll be fixing the gut with the hydrogen water. And so it's a constant process to where you can live and thrive and be what you were created to be and, and accomplish, as I say, accomplish your divine potential because your gut is working properly. And that's all based on the necessity of hydrogen. Hmm. So interesting. And it hydrogen, it's a long time since I did chemistry, but hydrogen is number one, right? It's yeah, on the periodic table. Uh, periodic yeah. table. Yeah. Okay. All right. I let's move away from the chemistry side of things and just like understand that okay, it's having a chemical and electrical effect on the body and a positive effect. So let's talk a little bit about like how do we how do we get hydrogen in water? <laughs> So we, and, and remember what I said earlier, naturally you would produce it on your own. So that would be ultimately the best, uh, letting nature do what it does. But since we don't have that ability anymore, what we are doing is we are separating water molecules. So you have H2O and we separate a small number of water molecules about you know, 1.6 parts per million up to four and a half parts per million of, of, of water molecules. And we separate them into hydrogen and oxygen gas. We send oxygen out to the atmosphere where you can breathe it. And we dissolve the H2 from the H2O liquid. And so now you have a gas, H2 gas, that is dissolved in the remaining H2O liquid or water and that's what's happening we are not affecting ph we are changing the electrical potential to a negative 400 to a negative 600 millivolts of electrical potential and we're dissolving hydrogen gas to the highest level that we can based on Boyle's law based on how much gas you can dissolve in a liquid at one atmosphere let's say and, and that's around 1.6 to 1.8 parts per million. So that's what we do. And, and that basically the echo water is a delivery vehicle for the hydrogen gas to the body. And as soon as you have the hydrogen gas in the body, within three minutes to five minutes, you have ghrelin secretions going to the hippocampus, the hypothalamus and the brain stem to increase cognitive function or brain function itself and to increased plasticity we we many times see around 32 percent increase in plasticity in minutes we also see 
normalization of alpha and beta waves. So the brain is functioning better within three to five minutes. And you can, you can see this with EEG. And, and that's the first effect. And then you just feel more energy. Typically, people have more sleep, better sleep that night. I mean, all the things that start to happen. Mm, pretty amazing. Um, is there like is there a minimum amount of hydrogen that needs to be in you know in the water? Like I'm I'm used to civil engineer. I'm used to the parts per million, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but is, is there a minimum amount that needs to be in the water for it to have these beneficial effects? There, there hasn't officially been an amount but what has been accepted as a therapeutic concentration is half a part per million of hydrogen gas in in water and that's just based on you know there's 12 there's there's 1250 studies 3000 articles that when you get to that half a part per million they consider it therapeutic a lot of people like one part per million because they can really feel kind of a boost of energy but even for Parkinson's, it was only 0.1 parts per million of hydrogen that stimulated gastric Ooh. ghrelin. And so the, the reality is we just need hydrogen present in the body. But if you were to ask what's, what's a therapeutic concentration, it is half a part per million. And all of our devices dissolve three to four times that at minimum. Mm. Okay, thanks. All right, so there is that the minimum kind of accepted threshold. And then is there, can you get to like too much? Can you get too much hydrogen in your body? You cannot. So you can't, you'll breathe it out and there's no top end. There's no contraindications that have ever been um, published. So <clears throat> you can't get too much hydrogen. And there was a entity in Japan called the International Hydrogen Standards Association. And, and they have put out a standard that to be considered a hydrogen device or hydrogen water device, you have to be able to use distilled water in the device as the source water. And you have to be able to dissolve half a part per million. So that's why we can use that as a standard mm -hmm. and we're, we're currently the only company in the world that has accomplished that standard with a flow through uh, water device. Uh, we were able to accomplish three times that, um, but we were the only company that has met that standard. And the reason being is we have a proprietary hydrogen module that there's no other company that has. They typically are using alkaline type uh, electrolysis devices, which they require uh, minerals in water or conductivity. So that's why distilled water wouldn't work well with their machines. But we do have the IHSA that's been established to set a standard. Okay, what's the IHSA? That's the International Hydrogen Standards okay. Association out of Japan. Okay, all right, gotcha. Um, okay, so we've got the standard that the, the, is the one you're using now. Um, mm -hmm. And how, I guess, why do you, why is distilled water necessary to begin with, or, or is it? Um, it's not necessary, but distilled water is clean. I mean, it's always been the gold standard in medicine. If you go back into medicine, distilled water has always been used by doctors. When you have a critical patient <clears throat> and, and you don't want to introduce anything else you know, when you're trying to figure out what's wrong or you're trying to fix somebody, distilled water is a good baseline because it's just water. Um, unfortunately, some people feel erroneously, but some people feel like distilled water or reverse osmosis is somehow bad for the body because it doesn't have minerals. I think this has been um, propagated and promulgated by the alkaline water companies because they can't use that water in their machines. And so they have said, you know, in untrue things about distilled or reverse osmosis that somehow they're dead water or somehow they're not good for you because they don't have minerals. And it's just categorically untrue. It, it's false information. Uh, water is water. 
whether you have minerals in it or not. And what's really important to understand is the minerals that are in water come from rock. They come from the earth, which is nothing wrong with that, but they're inorganic minerals. They're not organic minerals from vegetables. So what, what happens is plants or vegetables that grow in the earth, they pull up the minerals from the earth that are inorganic and they convert them to an organic state, not organic like pesticide or no pesticide. I'm talking about inorganic yeah. versus organic. And inorganic minerals are not very bioavailable to our body. So the minerals in water aren't really the minerals we need. And somehow relying on minerals from water to give us our minerals is, is not really appropriate because it's not bioavailable in the first place. We need to have minerals from vegetables and food items. That's where we should be getting our vegetables. So a lot of people that don't understand that once they do understand that they're like oh my gosh of course it would make sense to have pure water so you don't have all the contaminants chemicals radiation who knows what that's in water nowadays it would be better to have properly filtered water mm. you know i've heard that too i've heard people say well if you get, if you have distilled water you got to remineralize it with some you know salt or something like that but you're saying that's not necessary I'm saying it's not necessary. If people want to do that, there's nothing wrong with it. They're, they're, they're perfectly welcome to do that. Um, there are trace minerals. There are different things that you can get with certain types of salt. And <clears throat> that's, I, I don't have an issue with that, but I, I just want people to understand there's nothing wrong with having water that's pure because that can actually help you as well. It can facilitate detoxification because water does take, contaminants out of the body and and this belief system that if you drink water that doesn't have any minerals that somehow they're going to leach it out of you is completely false and we would have to ask the question why would water do that because that would mean that water has to need the minerals more than we do or somehow have power to take them away from our body and water doesn't need minerals <clears throat> water is a perfectly stable molecule by itself and so I, I just think we need to get rid of um, misinformation and, and not have all this crazy information about water that's untrue. We need to just understand that having energy in water is great. Having minerals in water can be great for people. I don't have a problem. But I will tell you this, it's pretty difficult to remineralize because people do talk about remineralizing water. But how do you do that? Like, what do you put into water that's going to be water soluble or is going to go back into the water that's going to replace what was in the water when it ran across the ground for who knows how long and came from the earth? You know, you're never going to do that. Typically, people have these these systems where they say they're remineralizing, but it's just calcium sulfite, which is a calcium salt, which is a food preservative. And yes, it's going to raise the pH of the water. But again, pH doesn't matter. You can get water from the earth. It's a five and a half to eight and 8.4 pH. It's just based on the minerals, not the water itself. So anyways, enough about that. But I, I think that pure water, there's nothing in the world wrong with drinking pure water, but you, you will have a burden taken off. And what I do tell people is buy a filter. Don't be the filter. And that's what people need to understand is that if you're drinking water that has contaminants in it, you're forcing your liver, your kidneys, your pancreatic system to, to have to get rid of all that. And it can be a burden on you. It can be a burden if you already have other issues. So Yeah, yeah. And uses a lot of energy as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So you mentioned like 2000 studies, like I came across some on my own. Um, mm -hmm. So I know that this has been well studied, uh, mm -hmm. the benefits. So what what kind can you sort of speak to some of those studies and what you've seen in in the studies what it's saying about particular illnesses you know uh you mentioned parkinson's earlier like what i saw was on rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. um and others so can you speak to those dr paul sure and one of the best places to go for hydrogen studies is hydrogenstudies.com this is a website that has all the studies, you know, there's, there's 1250 that, that we know. And on that site, hydrogenstudies.com, they're all indexed. 
you can type into the search bar, whatever disease model, whatever issue you're wanting to do research, if hydrogen will help it, or if there's a study. So hydrogen studies with an S.com. And you can, you can go and research on there. As far as rheumatoid arthritis, what was great about that is it was a double blind, the one that I'm, I have studied, there was a double blind study done on rheumatoid arthritis and with hydrogen water administration, not only did you normalize all of the joints, but, but it didn't come back. You actually fixed the oxidative stress. So first of all, we need to understand what the cause of disease is because, because this will be helpful for everyone listening. The leading cause of disease, it doesn't matter what disease you have, the leading cause of disease is the combination of oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. When you combine those two things in the body, you end up with a disease model. So if the cause of disease, the primary cause is oxidative stress and chronic inflammation, and hydrogen reduces oxidative stress and inflammation, this is why hydrogen has such profound effects on disease models. So when it came to our rheumatoid arthritis, it went away and it didn't come back. And that's what I think we all want is, and, and the reason it did that is because rheumatoid arthritis is from oxidative stress and inflammation. And so hydrogen, that's its primary role. Now, uh, some other diseases that have incredible studies are diabetes. There are 62 studies that I'm aware of on diabetes alone type one and type two, there's more on type two than type one. But the reality is in the, the one that's my favorite, it was a double blind study done with 30 individuals with diabetes and six individuals with IGT or what's called impaired glucose tolerance. 80% of the individuals in the study were normalized during an eight week study. And then there was a 12 week washout period, you know, to see what would happen and they continued. And what they were showing is not only was there lipid and glucose metabolism effects, in other words, the body was, was fixed, but at the end of the study, it said hydrogen water was a potential treatment for impaired glucose tolerance and also diabetes. And that's very powerful for people. If you have diabetes, being able to drink water with hydrogen in it, having the potential to modify diabetes or to fix that issue in you that's huge so that that's very powerful because i spent many years obviously in diabetes and the effects on the body and mm -hmm. typically and it's not a it's not everyone but a high percentage of people with diabetes can drink the water for three to five days and have normal blood glucose levels and so this is what the study was showing um in the study there was also a 15 and a half percent reduction of cholesterol or ldl in the body and that is because you're reducing oxidative stress systemically in the body. And so it's very, very good to be able to do that. Um, Parkinson's. So there's studies on Parkinson's. There's many of them. And there's studies on Parkinson's that are saying there's disease modifying effects. Now, keep in mind, there's no striatial hydrogen or no hydrogen going to the brain there is gastric ghrelin going to the brain. Mm -hmm. So hydrogen itself is not going to the brain. It's just sending ghrelin up there, which was supposed to be there in the first place. And so you end up with modulation of brain by ghrelin, which is the hormone that's supposed to be modulating brain function. And so that's very, very powerful. Um, there was a beautiful study on colon cancer. And in this study, they studied 5-fluorocell, which was the chemotherapy drug of choice for colon cancer. They studied hydrogen by itself, hydrogen water. And then they combined 5-fluorocell and hydrogen water at the same time to see what would happen. Well, what they learned was that hydrogen water had a very strong anti-cancer activity in the body by itself. But when you combined five fluorocell and hydrogen, there was a hundred percent cancer cell death in the body. Wow. And the reason, yeah, the reason that happened was partially because of apoptosis. There's a thing in the body called apoptosis. And what apoptosis is, is that when a cell is dividing incorrectly or a cell is not doing something correctly, it will destroy itself. 
And that's what apoptosis means. Well, well, somehow when a healthy cell becomes a cancer cell or a cancerous cell, apoptosis is turned off. So it won't destroy itself. Mm -hmm. So hydrogen activated or benefited apoptosis so that it was working again and this the cancer cells destroyed themselves so this was a beautiful study talking about how hydrogen can turn back on apoptosis and so again we have a hundred and there's 117 studies on hydrogenstudies.com there's 117 on cancer types alone and there's no guarantee as you know on any of these things but there's a lot of studies that are showing huge benefits so those are some of the studies and then one that people may like is a lot of people are tired in the afternoons. A lot of people have fatigue and whether they're weekend warriors or they're professional athletes or elite athletes, hydrogen water has been shown in studies where you're drinking the water half an hour before you go in the gym, half an hour before you play soccer, half an hour before you are running around the block, whatever it is that you won't have uh, what's called exercise induced muscle decline or lactate buildup in the muscle. So hydrogen is able to prevent wearing out or what's called fatigue. And it, it could be a beneficial you know, drink for those that are athletes. And so there's, there's some fun things that, that you can find. Um, there's immune function issues. As I said, the most impactful that we've had is people that were gluten and dairy intolerant for 10 years. In other words, we had some people that if they even ate one tiny little morsel of something with gluten in it, they would be in bed for three days. And after drinking the water with hydrogen in it, or our water in this case, they they were able to eat gluten and dairy with no inflammation and no issues. So, you know, I would say it's definitely a biohacking thing. Um, ben Greenfield, who is pretty well known in the biohacking space, has our water system in his house. That's what he's drinking and loves our system, has our sport bottle as well. And so I would just say that uh, it's worth a try. Everyone that's suffering out there, there's no need to suffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. And my daughter's a, uh, an ultra marathon runner. I think this might help oh, her too. So let's, sure. let's just talk a little bit. First of all, I just want to get your opinion on this. Like, why, why is this not as well known? Like. Why doesn't everybody know about this? Because with all these benefits, like I don't know. reversing, well, it sounds like what it's doing is helping the body kind of do its own work, right? Um, but why why are we not hearing about this more? Well, I don't think we've heard of any medical advancements in the last three years. <laughs> well, true. Um, and, and so there's very little effort to have any, any messaging for advancements coming out. I, I can tell you that I wish we were, I wish we were spending our time helping people that have disease models, because you look at some of the States and we have 20 to 30% of the population have diabetes. And you would think that we would be hearing about a water you could drink that could help your diabetes, but we don't. And I think that, and I don't want to trash any organizations um, because I think there are some people in this country that take pharmaceuticals that are helping them, you know, whatever. I don't want to trash that, but 80% to in some cases, 90% of the funding for every television channel every station are, are manufacturers of pharmaceutical components. And so it's not in their best interest to be promoting natural things. And, and so I just think naturally we won't, it's going to be up to us to educate. It's going to be those that are looking for other options for themselves. It's going to be me lecturing Last weekend, I was at the International Hyperbaric Association, and I, I, I was a second speaker, and people were like, oh my gosh, I've never heard of this, and I, it's just what it is. I, I get invited to speak. I get invited to be on summits. I really want to share with people what's going on, because 
I, there's no other way to get the word out. Mm. Well, we're doing our part now today, right? Yes. Telling people. So your company is is uh, Echo H two O, and you make devices that create the hydrogen water, right? So can you just give us like a big overview of the kinds of devices that you have? Yeah, we have everything from rechargeable uh, sport bottle that is beautiful. It has 10 ounces of water. You put pure water in or at least filtered water in. There's a lithium ion battery. It's rechargeable. You push a button and in five minutes, you have 2.5 parts per million of hydrogen gas. You can also run it for 10 minutes and you'll have 4.5 parts per million, which is uh, which is a ton. But that's called the Echo Go, E-C-H-O Go, Echo Go, so that when you're on the go, you have it. So we have everything from a sport bottle to a pitcher that's half a gallon that's also rechargeable. And then we get into our server, which is designed to go with filtered water. So if someone already has a filtration system in their home, or if they want to purchase the Echo RO, we have a RO system that's tankless that makes a quarter gallon a minute of reverse osmosis water. You can combine that with the server. We have the Echo H2 machine, which makes filtered only water for if you're doing coffee and tea and what have you, and then also makes hydrogen water. And that can go on top of the counter or below counter. And then we have our ultimate machine, which is four types of water. So it makes filtered only, hydrogen for drinking, alkaline water, four levels for cleaning dirt, and then acid water, which has hypochlorous acid in it for disinfecting. And so if you want to have a chemical free kitchen, then that's the machine for you. But that acid water is sometimes called beauty water because it can help with acne. It's a great astringent on the face, mouth, you know, eyes, skin, all that kind of stuff. And, and of course, it it can, you know, clean countertops and poultry and fish and meats and things like that if you're cooking. So those are the the machines that that we have. That's the product line that we have. And very soon we're gonna have an uh, inhalation device. Not that there's as many benefits as getting hydrogen through water, but there are some people that are asking for it. And so we'll have an inhalation. Inhalation just means you're gonna breathe it in. Right. It's kind of inconvenient because you gotta sit for 40 minutes and breathe, but um, whereas you can grab 16 ounces of water and, and off you go and, you know, so it's a lot, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can't get hydrated with, with, with breathing and gas. So anyways, um, we have the only products that are IHSA certified and we have, we're the original hydrogen water company. There's a lot of companies, unfortunately, that are talking about their water machines as hydrogen, but they're not really. And so it's a little bit concerning out there because people are getting um, the wrong information, but our website you know, is the best place to go and get those products. And then for research, the hydrogen studies.com. We have a lot of celebrities. We have a lot of very famous doctors that endorse our product and have been using it for many years. Um, Cause we've been around, we were the first. And so 2011 um, is when echo brand was finished when I developed it. And the important thing is we're, we're not changing pH of the water we're giving the proper pH water for people and you're gonna have pure water. The filtration system that's built into the Echo H2 machine and the Echo Ultimate are removing heavy metals, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, glyphosate, all these kind of things. We do remove them and we have independent studies showing that. We also have a whole house filtration system that's only, you know, very, very inexpensive. And it, and it goes into the house and it'll be there for 10 to 15 years, maintenance free. And so we really have solutions for people that they need. Perfect. So we'll have the uh, links to the website in the show notes. And also we'll have a discount link. I don't have it right now, but we will have a discount link there as well. And um, I, Paul, Dr. Paul, I always ask this one question of my guest, at the end, and that is, 
with everything that you know, because this is about intentional living, what would you say is one, like a baby step, a micro step someone could take today that's going to begin to initiate healing in their body? What would you say to that? Well, first and foremost, getting water into your system that's not full of contaminants to allow your system to flush out contaminants is is really a first good step because and really getting hydrogen in that water would fix a lot of things for people and a lot of the doctors we have 1700 professionals that are that promote our products what they've begun doing is just giving water to their patients to see what's fixed and then they work on what's left after the fact mm -hmm. the other thing the other thing i would say is forgiveness being able to forgive others and that in, and forgive yourself but the act of forgiving people is a freeing thing for you and for them and can sometimes go generations so understanding that we are all messed up and we come here with a manual but not a not a very intensive manual and we're just trying to figure it all out we, we our parents didn't know everything we as parents don't know everything and so applying a little bit of forgiveness or grace to other people and being able to not hold claim on someone else's life and i know people do hurt hurtful things and some of the things i hear about are just despicable but being able to forgive them actually frees you and frees them and allows them on their journey to hopefully not do that anymore. But <clears throat> understand that applying forgiveness doesn't mean you're giving up who you are. It means you're a more loving individual and you're coming from a more mature place and just saying, listen, I'm going to do. And, you know, we, we, we know that forgiveness is good, but sometimes it's hard. But believe it or not, from a health perspective, forgiveness can help you more than you understand. So I would say forgiving others. It really does. Thanks so much for saying that. Actually, in my membership, we our, our theme for the month of June is forgiveness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I know it's so fundamental to, to our health because when we're hanging on to those resentments and anger and so on, we're, we're creating a state of stress in the body and body can heal like that so mm -hmm. forgiveness is just we do it for ourselves really it's not for the other person so i'm so glad that you said that but also the water like people are yeah. going around chronically dehydrated so at least yes. start drinking water um this has been really fabulous dr paul thank you so much for coming here today for helping us spread the word about the benefits of hydrogen water and, and how it can really help your body heal, like set up the environment for your body to heal. So I really appreciate the work that you're doing in the world. Thanks. Thanks for being here today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks to all the people that have been watching and listening. And uh, if you know someone that needs to get pain and inflammation down, has some kind of health condition, then share this podcast with them because you could be changing their life. So thanks so much. We'll see you again soon.